This is the ninth meeting of criminal law. Our topic is mistake of law as a defense to a criminal charge. This can be a slippery topic, but I will do my best. If we take our time, I think we can put it into a nutshell. Let's start with another of those seemingly insignificant squib cases, Regina v. Smith David on page 333. The defendant Smith appeals from his conviction under the Criminal Damage Act. His counsel argues that error lay in this jury instruction. Belief by the defendant that he had the right to do what he did is not a lawful excuse because in law he had no right to do what he did. What did Smith do that he thought he had a right to do, but didn't? Smith was a tenant in a rented apartment. He installed some baseboard molding along the wall to conceal speaker wires that were part of his sound system. When his lease was up, Smith pried off the baseboards and removed the wiring before vacating. His landlord was not pleased. Evidently, the landlord thought the flat looked better with the trim. The landlord complained, and Smith was prosecuted under the Criminal Damage Act. Smith couldn't believe what was being done to him. He demanded to know, How can I be done in for smashing my own property? If you dig deep enough into your 1L property outlines, you'll discover the following perhaps surprising doctrine. By the affixing of a chattel to real property, it becomes a fixture, an integral part of the real property. So when Smith tacked up the baseboard molding, he was, in legal effect, making a gift to his landlord. And when he pried off the molding, he was damaging not his own, but his landlord's property. Lucky for Smith, he hadn't installed a crystal chandelier. That would have been a fixture likewise. Smith had no legal training and so had no idea this doctrine was a part of the common law of property. That's tough. Or does his ignorance provide him with a defense? As always, we need to look at the statute. A person who without lawful excuse destroys or damages any property belonging to another intending to destroy or damage any such property or being reckless as to whether any such property would be destroyed or damaged shall be guilty of an offense. The key material element here is belonging to another. Does the Crown Prosecutor have to show culpability as to that element? If so, as in Morissette and numerous other cases, Smith's ignorance could negate it giving him a complete defense to the charge. There are culpability terms in the statute. I see intending and then reckless. They occur downstream of the belonging to another element, and so we could fritter away our time wondering whether either would apply. That is an unnecessary exercise because Unless this offense is a mere MPC violation, carrying no jail time, we know that under any approach, it makes no sense to suppose the legislature meant to exclude culpability as to the critical element. Of course, it has to be shown that Smith was culpable as to damaging and damaging property. But there's nothing wrong with damaging your own property, even intentionally. So under all the approaches to mens rea we've covered, culpability has to be shown as to the of another element. I can't imagine that a reasonable jury could find that Smith was even negligent as to this element, unless there were some evidence that Smith had been tipped to the fixture doctrine. It was error for the trial judge to have charged the jury that Smith's error as to whose property the baseboards were was no defense. But wait! Ignorantia legis nemenem excusat. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. What gives? In our next installment, we will get a detailed answer. For now, it has to suffice to say that the scope of this maxim is often overstated. <laughs>